Hello, welcome to Vegas and Jim's Sunday's edition. Today's date is July the 28th, and Miss Vegas is going to start off by giving us a great watch list for next week. All right. Well, good morning, everyone. Hope you're having a very good weekend. So we are just going to jump right into the watch list so that you could enjoy the rest of your day. So we're going to talk about REKR, SMSI, UQM, Bind, Perry, TNAV, Costco, and Zynga. So let's begin. So we're going to talk about this new stock here. Well, it's not that new, but I don't think we've really talked about this. And this is the company called Recore Systems. R E K R. And um, I actually did alert this actually on Thursday uh, morning uh, in our chat. It came across as a nice swing trade. And Jim can show you here the alert that I did share. Um, you know, this company is uh, very involved in the security and surveillance business. They are actually involved in public safety, they do electronic toll collection. They do, they're into banking and insurance. They're into logistics. They're into traffic management. I got to tell you, they're also involved into like artificial intelligence. They, you know, they also analyze video streams. So, you know, when you're driving and they have those cameras watching us, they're into machine learning. I mean, they're into so many things. Well, let me tell you, um, this stock actually uh came across the popped actually on the scanner i mean you can and jim can show you the website as well um but this company also um you know they popped on the scanner and i want to mention too that they had news um over a little over a week ago and what they've done is um they've actually partnered with a company called nvidia software and analytics and um, they're basically going to really get very involved in the artificial intelligence. This artificial intelligence, I'm telling you, you gotta, you gotta pay attention to AI. Um, anyhow, so this company, um, you can see that the beautiful action on that beautiful weekly chart, and we had some nice movement uh, on this um, stock. Um, you can also see. Now, I have to say, I'm very impressed with the CEO, Robert Berman, because you know what? I don't know if you guys know or remember, but this company was actually uh, not meeting compliance and um, they actually regained compliance with the company back in June, towards the end of June. And, you know, I have to say that from, since they've regained compliance to now, uh, I think that's great. I mean, the, the chart's looking great. Company, you know, the whole weekly, it's just looking phenomenal. So I think this is definitely looking to have a continuation on this, on the actual stock moving higher. And uh, I think they're a, a good stock like for you to keep a watch on, especially if you like swing trades, uh, one to watch. And Jim, talk to us about that chart because I'm actually quite impressed with this one. Yeah, we got a nice little, pretty much a cup and handle on a three year where we have a double top. So we're, we're working on trying to touch that triple top right now at 550. So as I showed you in this chart right here, we got two tops here and then here to hear this last candle breakout up to this is on a weekly of 534. So I'm going to bust this down back to a yearly, yearly daily. You can see we've had a nice little run from the bottom of 43 cents all the way up to 544. We tried to break that up once before at 250 and she pulled back, but this is beautiful here the last three months on this chart. I'm going to pull up the 20 day now and get a little glance at the 20 day. You can see we've had a nice steady graceful run up on the 20 day one hour chart right here. And I'm going to call some support levels. I see a low support right down here right around the 481 area. That's where we had that previous high on that candle right there. And she, So we're going to put 480 as a third support. And then your your second ones will put this up to a daily one minute. That 480 is going to be your low. And I'm going to double check right here. Yeah, pretty much 480, 483. Then your second support is going to be right down in this channel here at 491 to 501. And that first one is going to be right here at 520. So at 520 is going to be your first support. 
and then we've got a pivot point area and that's going to be drastically I'm going to put that right in here right around the 531 so we got to break a resistance of 550 and I think we can do that on the three if we break that 550 on the three year that's going to be a pretty nice little breakout so I'm going to put this support right here at 530 it's going to be like a pivot point if it starts to go below that you'll see that 480 maybe and that's going to be a strong buy at 480 with a resistance to break of 550 and if that happens we can move on up into 25 50 cent increments if not it can pull back to this 541 if it breaks past that 550 and become a first support now this is a TTM squeeze chart that I'm using also the moving averages that I've been using lately are the 200 the 34 and the 9 EMA and I also will use them as support levels and the next one we're going to talk about is going to be one that had a great run Friday was loaded into our room and it's called SMSI yes and you know what I uh, want to say also thanks to Wall Street uh, CFO he mentioned this way back in May as something more for a long term so if anyone did have it a long term congrats to them but we alerted this also on Thursday um, and we did alert this as a swing trade opportunity um, and, and you know we did talk about this in our video because the earnings did come out and I did mention that I was going to hold this into earnings. And I really like the fact that their stock was on 52 week high, a huge volume surge, and definitely spotted a pocket pivot. So to me, the stock looked very bullish. And I did hold into earnings because of the fact that I have access after hours and I was able to, you know, if I had to, you know, shut down the, you know, trade and take a loss, I would have that capability. Um, so very rare that I actually hold into earnings, but I just really like this setup here. And my goodness, what a great move it had after hours. Uh, we saw buyers coming in, even on Friday, buyers coming in. The stock's in a new uptrend, new 52-week closing high. I mean, the earnings were just super strong. And uh, you know what? I have to also mention that, you know, this company here, um, you know, they're into very different things. But as you can see, um, they're very involved in the software solution. You know, they deal with wireless services. They're involved in cable. They're involved in the smartphone. They're involved in the Internet of Things. Um, they're also into graphic animation, illustration, digital art. Um, they actually work with award-winning movies and television shows, advertising for the, you know, what you see on TV, uh, internet content, 3D gaming. I mean, they're just in everything. Uh, so very impressed to see um, what, uh, how this company has performed and one to keep a watch on because a company like this that's involved in so many things, especially Internet of Things devices, I got to tell you, these companies at this price, I think is a bargain. Uh, so definitely, if you like longer term holds, keep a watch on this one, because I really don't know if these price levels are going to sustain. I think we're going to see, you know, slowly, 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 this continue to move higher and higher. And so now we're at July 28. Uh, we'll revisit this in the next couple of weeks, but I'd love to see where it is in the next couple of weeks. I'm still holding. I'm long on this one. Uh, and uh, looking for it to continue. So, Jim, let's hear about that beautiful chart. Yeah, it definitely had a huge breakout last Friday. It was down here in a small little resistance channel of probably right around the 239 area. That's what it had to break, and you could tell Thursday that it did create a double top on two days in a row at 350, and then Friday it went ahead and had a closing uh, right at 575 after hours we're up at, we hit a 596 and it pulled back to that 556 area that I have right here and bounced right back up and created like a little bowl a little cup with a little small handle on it with a lower neck with a lower resistance line but I still think I've got three little supports on this right now we're going to pull it up to the 20 day the resistance we had to break was at 556 and we did that we closed at 575 with an after hour high of 596. So I'm going to draw that resistance line on here right now at 596. 595 is what we got to break. So on a 20 day, give me a real good look on how this thing's ran. It started to break out on Thursday after hours. <clears throat> then it did bounce up and create a little resistance level right around 450. Got another one right here right around the 470 area. 
then after then the next day it ran up and had that high and to close at 596 pulled back to support at 556 so that's going to be the channel we want to hold the first support low 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 supports 495 this can pull back because of the huge run it had and you might have some people wanting to take profit but if the momentum snares up we need to break that 595 area <clears throat> low support right around 470 595 needs to 495 needs to hold and your first three supports after that will be 515 529 and 556 with a resistance to break of 595 and I really did like this trade Thursday and Thursday after hours and Friday SMSI <clears throat> Next one is UQM. UQM. Okay. So UQM technology. So I bring this to your attention because this one here had some news uh, last week. Um, they actually have um, announced from the commission, the Committee of Foreign in Investment in the United States, um, which is called the CFIUS. They've actually cleared the previously announced merger between the company and the wholly owned subsidiary of Dan Foss Power Solutions. So the closing of this merger agreement will take place on July 31st. So, you know, just keep a watch on this. Um, it says here that the process for Dan Foss to purchase the shares of common stock from the shareholders for 171 per share will begin after the closing. So keep a watch on this, could see some movement in the stock. Um, you know, this company is a manufacturer of power dense electric motors generators, um, power electric controllers, they do fuel cell compressors, really for commercial trucks, the Marines, the industrial markets. Um, so they're very involved in electric and hybrid electric, plug-in hybrid electric. I mean, this company should do something with Tesla. I mean, who knows? Um, but definitely keep this company on your watch because of this potential, the approval of the merger, which is taken, which is closing this week. Uh, so definitely on my watch. No position at the moment, but it'll definitely be on my watch list. And Jim, that is a weird chart. So yeah. let's hear about that weird chart. It, it looks to me like it's a weird chart, but it also looks to me like it's it's undervalued just by what yes. they do entirely. But I'm going to pull up the year chart and show you what weird looks like. We've been in a real sticky channel right here. And I mean, you hardly ever see a stock that's run so long and being just a small little four cent channel for six months but something real big happened right back here on uh 118 19 that made this stock bounce up and create a new high right here and that low was down there right around 113 and it bounced up to 164 to 168 for the longest period of time with a little pullback here during this period right here for a couple of weeks so the resistance we did need a break was at 168 now I've got a 179 up here, and I'm going to pull this up on a three-year, see if that tells you anything. We did have a wick high at 179, so if we can break past that, that's going to be a, a real good start for this company. But I think it's kind of oversold. I'm going to put a low support down here at 160 for maybe my second support, and then your third one's going to be right here at 157 with a very low low at 149. The resistance we need to break is going to be this 179, but as Miss Vegas said, it is kind of a strange chart. So this is the one I'm going to have on watch. Uh, it's had low volume. It's definitely going to be something that that might pick up with this merger, and that's going to be a, a catalyst that can really make this stock run. That's UQM. We got a break of 179 resistance. The next one we're going to talk about is going to be on everybody's mind, BYND. Oh my goodness, can I just tell you this beyond me, till this day, it's beyond belief, the valuation of where this stock has gone. Um, you know, they have earnings tomorrow. I, I mean, I keep hearing different times of the earnings. I'm hearing pre-market. I'm actually hearing after hours. So... You know, what time is Beyond Meat earnings? I will have to see what I can find out because I'm hearing so much conflicting um, information. But, wow, I got to tell you, 
We had an option call on this one for 240 strike. And um, let me tell you, we paid, some people paid 35 cents. Some people bought it at 90 cents and we took it to around um, $3 per contract. You had to basically be in and out of this fast because when it got there, as you could see the activity on Friday, especially if you've been watching this stock, I mean, this goes up $5, drops $5, goes up $7, drops $7. So, you know, when you're in these crazy options, especially, um, you know, the, va the valuation of the option just decays really quickly and then suddenly reverses and goes up a lot. So you had to be quick to take your money out. And then if you liked the call still, you could rebuy it and basically scalp it really. But my God, that was more than a scalp. That was two, $300 uh, profit each time. So Beyond Meat uh, is definitely scheduled for earnings tomorrow. Um, you know, are they making money? I keep hearing different things that they're not really that profitable just yet. Uh, that doesn't mean that they're that people are not going to be um, concerned uh, or be watching this. But the stock has moved, obviously, ahead of the earnings. And uh, we are waiting to see what on earth are they going to share with us uh, tomorrow. So uh, definitely, we know that it is, I will say, the hottest IPO of 2019. You know that we've had IPOs with Uber. We've had an IPO with Lyft. None of them have taken the spotlight the way this bind BYND has done. Um, you know, the company was founded in 2019. And, uh, you know, the customers, um, you know, are liking the product. So, I mean, the company is boasting that their meat is healthier than traditional meat counterparts. People are sometimes disputing that. Nevertheless, the bottom line is, you know, now they have that little partnership with Dunkin' Donuts. Um, and, you know, they're in 30,000 grocery stores, as Jim mentioned the other day. I mean, they're in Publix, they're in Kroger, they're just everywhere. Um, so we have to see what is this company going to do? What are they going to say? So you know what? I guess we have to wait and see what they're going to do, what they're going to say. And you know what? Bottom line is, how is the market going to react? That's basically the bottom line. Because sometimes the earnings may not be that great, but people don't care. They still like it. Um, or sometimes, you know what? Obviously, people do care and the stock pulls back and then people still buy it because they see it as an opportunity. So I don't know. We'll have to see what their um, earnings is going to be. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. Uh, and uh, I guess so is Jim. I mean, listen, this had an opening price on May 2nd of 46 bucks. Can you imagine people that had it from back then that maybe held it till that from then to now? I mean, it's not that long ago that the IPO opened. So, Jim, let's hear it from you because it's going to be very exciting to sit back here and watch. I mean, I don't have any shares of this at all. I'm just going to watch and see what's going on and then I guess go from there. Yeah, I scalped this on an option Friday. Got in it on that 26, 26th day to the 250 strike. Got in at 42 and out at 60. And, if, and I played the pullback on it in a I'd probably held on to it. I probably could have got another 30 cents out of it easily. And this, to me, is this is a stock about being in the now. The reason I like it so much is because it's an environmentally friendly stock compared to what other, you know, producers are. And, and also the momentum on this has just been wonderful. And people's tried to short this and been stuck in it and, we called this out on our last video. I showed you the pattern it was in, and it was a beautiful day trade pattern. Plus, it was also a beautiful swing trade pattern from when we called it at 200 bucks. once it passed that $200 area. So that's going to be my low support is $200. I'd hate to see that drop any below that 200 if it decides to. We're going to pull up the 20-day on this one here now, but that there is the three-month pull up the 20 day it's had a beautiful little run from that 150 they even come out and try to give it a little cancer scare on this stock and it still didn't bother not a notch it dipped down a little bit and then she went ahead and bounced up this is a 20 day so we did have a kind of a red day on the TTM squeeze on this on this trade it did pull back to 232 but I did get in on the scalp when it was down here I mean this was a huge knife 
on it and I got in right around the 220 area and took it up a couple bucks and was able to make that make that good so we're going to pull this up now to one day and I'm going to try to give you a support on this level being as we did pull back to that 215.94 that's going to be your low 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 support low support and I don't think we're going to see that if the momentum picks up you probably see a little bit of selling going on this and then when that starts your indicators start to show you a turnaround maybe when that 9 crosses over that 34 or that or they cross over that 200 that might be a good time to get in this trade so we're going to have a low support at that 215 I don't think it's going to get any lower than that the 219 is going to be a real nice little place maybe for your low second low 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 but I'm going to call the entry level on this trade right now at 222.20 that's going to be my solid support level right there at 222.20 and then maybe your your third support is going to be at 225.45 and then you've got that neckline that resistance channel that we had that had to break out on the ascending triangle at 229.83 around 230 area it did pull back there a couple times and bounce up off that and ran a good six bucks from that 230 so I'm going to expect maybe a pullback Vegas and I called kind of mentioned 250 on this thing before it even hit that it did have a high pre-market of 245.96 so that's going to be the resistance that we're going to have to try to break now the next resistance is if it does pull back to that 230 area and hold or if it pulls back to that 222.20 you're going to count them lines above this as a resistance and then the, the resistance that we do need to break for it to run up to new highs to break back up to that 245 is going to be right around the 239 area and that's where we had the previous midday high on this little head and shoulders right here that pulled back and bounced up it did create a lower high and that kind of just is a little sensitive to me a little bit but once it pulled back to that 230 it bounced up and hit that high again so this is going to be one you want to definitely keep on watch don't try to rush into the trade if you start seeing the momentum move up on it that's the time to get in it let the shorts have their way with it they'll probably pull it down to that 222 20 area I don't want to see it go any lower than that maybe that 220 but somewhere in this channel right in here is going to be, I think, come tomorrow is going to be your entry level. We'll see what happens. And that's going to be that 219.85 to 22220. And the next one, are, and this is BYND, and I definitely keep it on your watch list. And the next one is my old step name, Perry, P E R I. Okay, well, Perry, Perry, this also. Uh, I gotta say our scanner is like super strong. I mean, picks up some great setups. We've customized it to actually pick good setups because we want to make money and we want to have good setups that are also for people that have a job. I mean, you can't be babysitting a stock all the time. Um, and you, you shouldn't really have to babysit a stock if you have a, a job. You should be able to do some swing trades and have some exit plans and, um, you know, this way you could still have your job and make money on the side. Uh, and Perry was one of those stocks. I mean, we've been watching the strength in this stock. This had definitely some beautiful 52-week highs here on Perry. And uh, what I really like about the stock, I mean, if you see, uh, you know, the stock looks definitely like it wants to have some continuation. I mean, this here is, you know, the um, Perion network, and uh, they're into the technology industry. You know, and by the way, they are in Israel, okay? And you know how I feel about Israeli technology and also with regards to, um, you know, the pharmaceutical sector in Israel because I still feel they're super, super strong. Um, and, you know, this company, they're very into um, online advertising. Um, they definitely, what they do is, you know, they really help, like, the brands capture the attention. So when you see ads online and you click, you're clicking because you like what you see, and that's what they do. They're very involved with companies like Twitter. Now. 
so sorry about that. We had some technical issues. So I was just saying that, you know, Perion Networks, obviously they're an Israeli company, and uh, I really love the setup of the stock. Um, you can see that, uh, you know, there is definitely going to see some continuation. So, you know, if you do like a swing trade or even day trade, I mean, you could definitely trade the stock. Uh, there definitely is room for this to go a lot more. Um, so, Jim, let's hear from you because this is a beautiful setup. It's got 52-week closing high. We saw a beautiful surge in the volume here. A uh, lot of strength in the actual stock. We don't have earnings, actually, for another week. So we're still good this week to trade this stock. So let me hear what you think about the chart. Yeah, we definitely broke out of a resistance level at 367, what we had to break. And we had a year low at 247. So that's happened a couple weeks ago when we broke out of that resistance level. And we created kind of an upward pattern with a one-year high up here at 466. So that's going to be the breakout we need to see. And I've got a 456. And that's where we were at close with a lower support right here at 440. So we're going to pull up the 20 day and look at the 20 day real fast. Beautiful little chart on this 20 day pattern. How she's run up, trade a little resistance, had a pull back right here at around 375. And then the last week and a half, every time it pops up on the scanner, it usually has a pretty good day. And kind of found, and then we found a resistance level at 440 we had to break last week and she broke past that created that 466 high that's going to be our strong resistance so your first support is going to be right down here at 440 your second one's going to be probably just a little below that at 431 and then i'm going to go for a low support right here at 417 and i'm going to draw that in red so i remember that 417 low support added that on there so we got the low support at 417. The second channel of support is going to be right in here, right around the 431 area to 440. And the resistance we got to break is going to be at that 466 to bring it up to new highs. And that's going to be Perry. And I do like, like the power on this stock right now. The next one we're going to talk about is going to be TNAV. Okay, so this is Telenav, and you know what? Telenav is out. Telenav is out in California, and I really have to say another good setup here. Um, you know, this company is a provider of connecting car and location-based services uh, for you know people that are on the road. So um, they're also into advertising. And, uh, you know, they're into navigation, mapping, big data intelligence, and local-based advertising. So you can have a look here at this beautiful chart. I mean, here's another good setup. Um, you know, again, a new 52-week high strength in the stock. I mean, these are good setups. I mean, again, earnings on this one, not till August the 9th. So we have this whole week and on most of next week to still trade the stock. I won't be surprised actually to see this stock head towards $10 in the coming sessions. Um, it's actually to me looks like in a beautiful new uptrend. And if you actually look at the chart on this stock, even going as far back as let's just say maybe back from February and then back in April, I mean, really, it's just been nonstop and really had a lot of strength even beginning of May. And ever since May, this has basically not stopped i mean we had all the way up to eight dollars had a bit of a pullback and then we broke the eights we're into the nines and uh we're it looks like we're definitely going higher i mean i could see 10 down the road in the coming sessions uh the float's not that bad it's about 35.13 million don't really see many shorts in here but you know what really liking this chart and i'd love to see double digits in the coming sessions and you know i look forward to hearing about their earnings I mean, I don't have a position in the stock. Even if I trade this, I'm definitely not going to hold into earnings. Uh, I would rather wait on the, in this particular case because it is a pricier stock. Um, but you know what? Look forward to hearing what they're going to report. Uh, Jim, let's hear what you think about this beautiful chart. Yeah, we had a three-year high of 1015 on it. So that's going to be our start target area between 1015, 1012, somewhere in there. That's going to be our target, $10, like she said. 
we do have a support level, a breakout resistance level here at 933. That's what we got to see on the three year chart. If we break at 933, we got 945, and then we can build her up to 10. Got a low support right here at 803. That's what I'm seeing right there in a way. With a, with a, you're probably, I mean, when I say low, I mean low, low. If it pulls back, that 1055 area is where you want it, want it to pull back to and, and hold. That's where I would like to see it pull back to in a way and hold. So we're going to look at the one year now. One year, you could, like Miss Vegas said, after that sell off back in December, she went ahead and she ran up every, almost every day with some pullbacks. Found a support level here at 575. And then it had to break a resistance up here at 685. And once it broke that resistance, the last three months it's been on an upward channel. It did pull back here to a little little place right in here right around the 723 to 738 area and busted past that so every time it's broke out it's broke out from a double top into a triple and then bam and that's what we did here we did have a little I'd say a fish hook or pocket pivot right here right around the 857 that's going to be your low 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 support 857 if it gets down to 8 it's going to be a strong buy real strong buy Let's pull up the 20 day. You'll have a beautiful 20 day chart here. She ran up to a high of 912 and then pulled back to that 857, which I call it as a strong support level. And I mean very strong. So you've got three different, you got four different supports right in here. I'd say that your, your first one's going to be right around 878. Then your second channel is going to be 893 to 903. And that first support, that I'd like to see hold is 912. The resistance you need to break is going to be that 933, and it's going to top off right here around 924 to get up to that 933. And if it breaks that, we're moving on up to that $10 mark, Miss Vegas. T N A V, and I do like this website, and I do like the chat, the pattern it's been trading in this past year here. And the next one we're going to talk about is going to be C O S T pretty popular oh my god who does not love going to costco i mean you know if you go to costco you leave you go for one thing and you're coming home with 10 things so you just go to costco and it's you know dangerous dangerous shopping at costco so you know costco i gotta say i'm watching this chart really more from well like in this case an options opportunity uh, it looks like the stock's been trading in a very tight range over the last sessions, like the last few sessions for the last, I don't know, month. Um, Jim will talk more about that. But it looks ready to me to have some sort of move on Costco. So I'm looking at it from an options play. And I'll be looking for something maybe for the August 16 uh, expiry date. Um, so if you follow on social media, um, I love stocks or myself or Jim on um, stock twits. I will be able to tell you which one I'm going to end up getting. Um, hard to say right now which one because I really just don't know what the value is of the option call. Um, again, depending on how the market opens tomorrow and with Costco, uh, anything can happen. So I don't know which one I'm going to get, what strike I'm going to get, uh, but I will be looking for something you know, two weeks, you know, two weeks from now, I might even look at something less time, uh, just depends on the price as well. Uh, but definitely Costco should be on your watch from an options play, or if you like large cap stocks, uh, you should definitely be looking at Costco. And uh, we'll see what they have going on. I mean, on Costco, uh, you know what, as they say, you know, we should really buy brands you love. And I have to say, I love Costco. I really do. The options are not that expensive. I mean, they do have weekly options, which I do like. Um, you know, the op they're not that expensive. The 280, 250 is about 162, 157 on the close Friday. If you wanted to get something a little pricier, maybe like a 285 strike uh, for next for this coming week. Uh, those ones are about 75 cents. So I'll be watching those two plays in particular but I'm not sure which ones I'm going to get yet until I see what happens. But definitely watching Costco for some sort of continuation here this week. 
Jim, what's happening? What do you think? We had a one-year low of 189.51 back during that crash we had back in December, and she's had a pretty nice little run up, almost, I mean, up a, to a, a, a last last Friday high of 284.31, and then she's consolidated all week long off that 9 EMA on a yearly daily chart. So let's pull up the 20-day. Get a little look at the 20 day. She's been in the 20 day pattern after that last breakout at Sending Triangle right here to a resistance level of right around the 282.93 area. So that's going to be our resistance. Our final resistance is going to be right here at 284.17. That's what we got to break. Pull back support. Let me put a little pivot point here in this channel right there. So that's going to be your first support right there at 281.15. After hours, we're at 281.88. You got another support level right below that 281.15 at 279.58. I'd like to see it hold that channel up. If not, your low support will have to fall back to this channel right here at 276.62 to 277.31. That's going to be your low, low, low. But I like if it pulls back any and you get in on a pullback at 279.58, might be your strong buy. If not, if we continue up, we've got to break the resistance of 282.93 to hit the long of 284.17. And then beyond that, will be will be beyond me. So that's going to be Costco. I really do like this. This has had a wonderful run all year long from that pullback that we had back in December. The next one we're going to talk about is going to be the last one, and it's a pretty popular stock too that's had a real good run this year, and that's Zynga. Well, I really like Zynga because, you know, they're into the gaming, and also what I like about it too is that the executives that work there, I mean, a lot of them used to work at Electronic Arts. So, you know, to me, this was like a little baby, little glue and very excited for Zynga. You know, they have earnings coming up. It's actually coming up this week on Thursday. Um, it looks to me that the chart finally broke out of this 450 zone. And look where it is. I mean, 646. Um, you know, the stock has constantly going up. Nice cup and handle. Uh, I just want to mention here on the option side, because again, I'm kind of looking at it from the option side. And for those of you, especially with the small accounts, I know a lot of you have messaged and said, thank you so much for giving us small accounts an opportunity to make money. And I'm, I'm very happy to do it. And so is Jim, you know, we're here to help people. Um, so with Zynga in particular, uh, if you like to look at options, um, we actually have some phenomenal option plays on Zynga. And one of them in particular that really stands out, and maybe you'd like to make a note of this for the video, um, are the Zynga calls for the seven dollar strike and i know the stock's only at 463 but these are the seven dollar strikes that expire august the 16th so the reason they would probably and they have and they're very cheap and that's what i kind of like about it as well uh they're only going for as a friday 13 cents mm. so that's really cheap and really good and the reason i like the date of august the 16th is also because of the fact that this is after earnings has already come out and if the earnings are good then you should see a response to the option calls obviously not moving in the right direction um so we also see a lot of volume uh thanks to ripster uh he did bring to my attention the august six calls the august uh, six dollar calls actually um that expired this week uh, very good uh, option volatility in there as well over 4200 contracts i mean zynga looks like uh, you know, a lot of action going on. So definitely watch these ones. You can get the $6 calls for August 16. And those were going at the time on Friday, did alert. Those were going for 59 cents. I also did alert the $7 calls and those are going really, really well as well. Uh, so definitely lotto plays on those. Um, those look fantastic. And I think you should keep an eye on these ones to see if these are of interest to you again trade what you like trade what's comfortable for your account but it looks like zynga there's a lot of activity here on the six and seven dollar strikes so you know what could zynga have a really strong earnings well i guess we'll find out this week 
And I did, I do want to mention a lot of block trades I saw in Zynga, a lot of block trades. So I don't know, looks like Zynga might have some good news coming this week. Stay tuned for the earnings. And Jim, let's hear about that chart. Yeah, we'll pull up the year chart first thing. I always like to pull that year up. We do have a double top we're working on here at the 655 area. It did hit that Friday, hit that 655 and pulled back a little bit. We closed at 646. I have a low, low support on this trade right now, right around the 590 area. If it pulls back, if it decides to pull back, but and it can. But with the double top resistance that we do need to break will be that 655. Now let me pull up the 20 day and get a good look at the 20 day chart. And this stock, I'm, I'm going to pull this year up. I'm going to pull up the three year. This stock's been stuck down here in the low channel for quite a while quite a while down here at this 450 area as you can see when 2018 came in she decided to break out and my crystal ball was definitely right about the market in 2019 because I figured we were going to have a good run and, and everything that pulled back back during that December has had a monstrous run and broke past its previous highs and it's just beautiful to me so that double top is at 655 we're going to pull up the 20 day one hour. I got a low support down here right now at 636. That's going to be my probably my second maybe or a solid support level at 636 with another one right down here. I'm going to put about 640. It's going to be your second one and your first support's going to be right here at 645. I know that's not a lot of a spread but I do think if we create and stay above the 636, we can start building a new channel. Now, the earnings come out. It can pull back to the 617 level, and that's going to be your low, low support area to probably get in and scalp it back up into the previous high that it had up here right around the 636, 640 area. But if the earnings are good and the market catches up to the momentum, we can break that 652 that 652 655 resistance we can move on up to that seven dollar mark and that's going to be zynga and that continues our watch list uh, for sunday's edition keep a good eye on all them trades also keep a good eye on on your ba and your mcdonald's and your starbucks and the ones we had in our last video they they were really a good runners for us and mcdonald's pulled back a little bit off earnings so i'm going to be watching mcdonald's also and Miss Vegas, you got anything you'd like to? Oh yeah, also subscribe and ring that bell. And in the website here, we do have a place where you can sign up and join the chat room, and that's right here under the chat service. You see the pricing, the setup instructions, read some of our testimonies and our team, and just we have a new place here. It's called Day Trader Tools. We have a stock portal where you can look up information, type in a ticker like AMD and it'll automatically pull up information that we continually go by throughout the day. Right now it's trying to sum it up, but there you are. It, it has like the, the stuff you need to know. We have a chart, we have the block trades, the SEC filings, and the news. And Miss Vegas, what anything you'd like to say? And thank you again, Miss Vegas, for helping me with options. It really has opened up my eyes a lot here especially in the past couple of weeks i had a good friday and i want to continue next week with it yeah you know what i gotta say you know options i mean i mean i have to say sometimes with the stocks i'm finding sometimes during the day some of these stocks these penny plus stocks that have come out on pop on scanners i'm finding sometimes there's just no follow through uh so as much as i love to trade them okay because i love momentum plays and so does jim no, sometimes do. there's just there's been no follow through so we're like, okay, well, that's not going anywhere. So we know what are we going to, you know, we still have to look to make money for everybody. So sometimes we are focusing on some option setups because I'm finding a lot of people with small accounts are really discovering that is a very good opportunity, a very good way to try to grow your account with less risk and very tough to short option calls as well. Um, because, you know, in options, you know, these penny plays are not available. Um, so uh, you are actually buying options on solid, solid companies, which are, you know, obviously less risky 
er than these penny stocks that are out there. So, I mean, there is opportunity for everybody, but I have to say I, my passion is the small accounts. Uh, also on our website, you'll notice on the Trader Tools drop down, there is an option there if Jim can show you uh, called Top Traders. And uh, I just got to say these two guys here, uh, Mr. The Wise, the Wise, and then the gentleman below, Scott One. Um, if you want to ever click on their link, uh, you just click and basically it takes you to their website. Uh, you know, we've talked to them and uh, given us permission to showcase their work. Um, you know, they actually have very good, these are great traders, very good information that they give you about uh, stock market tips. Uh, you know, in terms of a, as a trader, not tips as, you know, buy this, buy that. They're just sharing what they're doing, but also like trading tips, like mistakes not to make, mistakes they've made. Uh, so you may definitely like to check that out and see if there's any tools there that, uh, you know, that you can learn from. You'll see the uh, trader below, um, Mr. Scott Wand, uh, he talks about the fish hook. And people are wondering, like, what is the fish hook? You know, how to trade it. So if you actually were to click on his blog, uh, which is in our website, you'll be able to read how he trades it and explains how it works. So it's also a different things that you can learn about setups on a chart and different trading patterns. So use the information. It's there for you to learn. And if there's anything in the site, we're going to be adding a lot more. We just have a lot of stuff under development right now. But thanks to uh, Chad. Our software programmer has been doing a great job behind the scenes. And uh, sometimes these programmers don't get enough credit because they're behind the scenes. But huge shout out to Chad doing a fantastic, fantastic job. So thank you, everyone. And thanks, Jim, for helping us, too, with options, with the supports and resistance. Yep. Really makes a difference if we're staying in a trade longer uh, because you give us those targets. And, you know, Jim's great at giving us that information, helps us stay longer in the trade. And helps, you know, helps to believe in your setup. And that's really what matters. And I got to tell you, Netflix was shocking Friday when it had the huge knife catch. A lot of options got decayed from 80 cents down to 28. And guess what it did? It reversed and went over $2 a call. So, again, you got to look at the big picture and not just look at what's happening every microsecond. Look at the weekly. Look at the... You know, look at look at what's happening. Look at the pattern uh, that you're seeing to not necessarily be uh, stopped out. And uh, those were just fabulous. That was a fabulous recovery. I got to say, Netflix just wow. So it's going to be a great week. Huge earnings week. We have a lot of earnings this week. Um, so stay tuned on that because we're going to be doing some videos this week. And let me tell you, we're going to be reporting to you on these earnings. I mean, you know, this week there's going to be a busy, busy week. We have, as you know, Beyond Meats. We have AMD and Apple reporting this week on Tuesday. We have um, Grubhub. We have uh, Twilio, Qcom, Zynga. We have some Etsy's going on. I mean, so much action, so much excitement. So thank you, everyone. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Have a great weekend. Yes, and, and we also have a Twitter account if you're not able to get it in the chat room and you can follow some of our trades in here and you, I love stocks, hit that follow button. And that's about it that sums it up for the Sunday's edition, usually a little bit longer, but we also are a very educational room. We like to, we, we appreciate the new traders that are out there. We, we just love getting them started back up if you've been having losing trades come to our room i'm going to encourage you to to have patience and let them trades come to you this is the aftermarket report with vegas and jim today's date is july the 28th 2019 and one thing that vegas and i do and that is we love stocks <laughs>